Is damping factor a good indicator of quality in an amplifier? This question comes all the way from Greece, from Anestis. Hello, Paul. I'm Anestis from Greece. Hey, Anestis. I was just over in your country. What a lovely place you have. I'm curious about damping factor in amplifiers, and I was looking to buy a mid-range to a high-end amplifier, and I was told that damping factor is one way to tell if an amplifier is good or not. The higher, the better. Is this true? And if not, What's the best way to judge an amplifier only from looking at specs? <laughs> oh boy. What is actually damping factor and what does it tell us about the amplifier? Best regards, can't wait for your new speakers. Well, me neither. Neither, 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 neither. I don't know. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm ex getting excited. We, we just got word that the, the prototype chassis for the AN3, which is our, our smaller one, was shipped um, I think three days ago. So by the time you see this video, we should uh, actually have it in-house and be working with it. So that's pretty exciting. Now nah, just, well, a lot of work. Um, damping factor. Well, simply put, damping factor is a way to describe the output impedance of an amplifier. More simply put, because not a lot of us know what damping factor is, damping factor is a way to describe how well a amplifier can control a loudspeaker. So loudspeakers are funny devices. They are reactive and they put back energy even while they take energy. So when you power a loudspeaker, you've got these uh, big magnets and uh, coils of wire that act like magnets, and as you pump power into a woofer, uh, it, it, it springs out and then it comes back and it acts as a generator uh, in this, and if you've seen my video from Coal to Coal Train on our YouTube channel, feel free to go to look at Coal to Coal Train. Uh, it explains all about how magnets and, and, and wire uh, creates magnets and Michael Faraday. It's kind of a fun video. It's about an hour, but um, it's kind of fun. It explains all of that. But so if we take a magnet and we, uh, a coil of wire, sorry, and we move it near a magnet, we create energy. And if we put energy into a coil of wire, we create a magnet. And so as the woofer is pumping in and out to the amplifier, it's also pushing back electromotive force back into the amplifier. So uh, the amplifier has to be able to kind of ignore all that and control it. So if you have a very low damping factor, as you might with, say, a tube amplifier or a transformer coupled amplifier, it, it has a fairly low damping factor. And so that means it doesn't have a lot of control over the loudspeaker. How important is that? It's relatively important. It certainly isn't whatever that person told you. It is not a great indicator of whether that's a good sounding amp or a bad sounding amp. I would never use that. It's, it's just one of many indicators. And as longtime viewers of this channel know, there's no real way with specs to tell if an amplifier is going to sound good or bad. Uh, well, let me take that back. You could certainly tell that an amplifier is not going to be very good if it had terrible frequency response, if it had very, you know, limited slew rate, if it, uh, you know, but those are things that generally manufacturers aren't going to publish for you. <clears throat> so the average, I mean, I just bought a, um, for our system up here, I bought a little digital amplifier that is flat from, oh gosh, 10 hertz up to 30 kilohertz <clears throat> and puts out 20 watts. It has distortion that's well below 001%. Great specs. I think it was $50, $55. It works well for me for doing speaker measurements, but just for, just for shits and giggles, I put it on to the system here and didn't turn it up very loud because it's only got 20 watts. It's awful. I mean, it sounds really bad, really bad. And we had, 
we had a bit of a good laugh. Because if you were to look at the specs on this thing, you'd think, it's got no distortion, its frequency response is exactly what we'd want, it has reasonable damping factor on its output. Um, it's a fine little amplifier from a spec standpoint. You don't want to listen to it, it's awful. So, specs don't tell us a whole lot about how something sounds. And I know there are specs that if we dug deep enough that could tell us, I mean, it can't all be a mystery that we can only suss out with our ears. We keep working on trying to come up with ways to measure uh, things in the time domain, things that seem to affect our ears in, in, in ways that aren't reflected in the measurements that are standard in the industry. So I suspect someday we'll have a means of telling whether an amplifier is good, bad, ugly, or indifferent in the way it sounds, and we can do that by measurements, but not using the current measurements that we have, frequency response, distortion, damping factor, and all that. So to wrap this up, yes, high damping factor is desirable, but it's not going to tell you a whole lot about how that amp sounds. You're just going to have to rely on your ears for right now, which is not the end of the world because what are you going to do with this amp when you get it home? You're going to play music and use your ears. <laughs> and it either works or it doesn't, right? All right. Thank you and enjoy sunny Greece. Bye.